Oregon Trailer specializes in building small camper trailers for the high-end market, but their prices are surprisingly affordable. With base prices starting at just $8,500 and ranging up to $24,000 for their top tier trailer, there's an option for every budget. Additionally, their trailers come in a range of weights from as light as 550 pounds to as heavy as 2100 pounds, ensuring that there's a perfect match for your towing needs. Today I'll be taking Atlas down to Eugene, Oregon to show you Frontier Alpha, a teardrop like no other. So I'm John with Oregon Trailer. This is Frontier Alpha, our newest addition to our lineup. It's based on the Frontier body shape, all curves, airplane wing shape. Happens to be my brother's personal Frontier Alpha, so you'll see there's a little dust and grit and grime on it here and there, uh, as happens when you actually use these things. We have done this shape trailer, the Frontier, for many years. It was the very first entry into our market, but as the overlanding segment of the market has erupted, we've followed it. I think we've maybe led some of it. Um, and this one is the overland off-road variation of the Frontier shape. So it's done like our much loved TerraDrop Alpha, but with that all curves profile that everybody seems to uh, really like. When we do a built-in stove, which is optional, it folds down out of the cabinetry. That way it's not taking up all of your counter space all of the time. It's only there when you need it. You simply crank on the uh, valve of the propane right next to it. It's a very simple system, very few fittings which is good when you're taking these things vibrating through the back country. You don't want a lot of stuff. You want to minimize things as much as possible while still delivering as much as you can. So that's what this is all about for us is trying to find that razor's edge of what you need, what you want, and how to do it as simply and uh, efficiently and maintenance free as we can. Stove folds away when you don't need it. A pin goes in so it doesn't flop around on the trail, locking it into position. Our biggest trailers right now are five by eight, so five feet wide, eight feet in the main body segment, four feet tall. And that's small uh, across the market right now. Most manufacturers are trying to make bigger and heavier and more complex systems, and that's cool. There's something for everybody. We're not going that direction. Our intention with this is to make them as small and as light and as capable as we can. In our cabinetry, in our galley, I should say, we have lots of storage. Um, we have a center compartment. Behind all of that is our electrical compartment, our electrical distribution center. You don't need access to it very often, so pulling the cups out and stuff is not a very big deal. Um, we have lots of little fitment options to manage all of your things. Um, this is, again, one of our personal trailers, so you can see how we actually travel with our actual stuff. And Sawyer and I have done our, our layouts slightly differently. This is uh, Sawyer's preference and I think it works really well. Down below the cabinet, or the counter, excuse me, is managed storage. Sawyer uses bags. Um, we really like this Last US Bag Company. Um, very high quality, soft goods. And he has bags like this with managed stuff. Um, we use a lot of marine fastening hardware, like these little plugs. Our drawers are all on retention springs, so you have to pull hard, which makes it so they don't fly out on the road. Little spray faucets and marine chrome hardware. 16 gallon main tank underneath that's custom roto molded for us. Uh, it has chamfered edges on all the uh, bottom corners so that there's no hard shelves to fetch up on. And all of our fittings come up through the floor and they don't hang down below the trailer, unlike a lot of companies. And that is because we don't want things to get torn out. The layout of the trailer we've been doing for many years. It's a proven setup, it works great. And now we're in the fitment phase where we're just trying to maximize the space, make it the best to use. We're adding little baskets. These things can come out, transport to your picnic bench. The little wing dividers can come out and rearrange. And they fit in this pressure fit up into this cleat here and this cleat pair together for our side table. And I can show you how that works. It stows in the cabin. And the pin goes in to keep it secure. And now you have a legless section of extra counter space. We like to pull these back 
off of the, in line with the trailer so that you have kind of an L-shaped counter space and it doesn't take up extra width and cause you problems for kind of uh, getting around your campsite. So all of our alpha trailers, that is to say our off-road models, come standard with our proprietary roof rack system. Um, we have two different styles. Frontiers always come with the taller bars and that's to overcome the curve of the trailer and still get enough height so that your vent has adequate space to open. So this particular one is fitted with a stargazer window. What we call a tongue box, a lot of people think of this as a tongue box and there's nothing wrong with that verbiage, but we call this a tongue box. And then this is a cargo box and they can be used in complement this way. Uh, this is actually inside storage. You access through the headboard at the head of your bed uh, through sliding doors. And that way you can stay in bed and not move yourself to get access to the inside of that compartment. You can see it's a completely seamless integration. The floor actually extends in one piece out into that. It's not a bolt-on thing after the fact or slap-on. It is fully integrated into the rest of the trailer. A lot of manufacturers that do a similar thing end up with a seam right here. And that's okay for a while, but eventually it will, in my opinion, become an issue. Uh, everything that we do is as seamless as possible in every system that we, that we offer. That's especially true with the Alpha trailers that have this kind of coating that is everywhere. It's, it's underneath, it's on the top, it's on the sides, it's all over, there are no seams. A fully like, um, encapsulated system. On our off-road trailers, we'll often fit them. It's an option, but many people use it with these little deflector step wedges for and after the fenders. It does a number of things. One, it, it uh, provides a, a surface to scrape along so that you don't damage the side of the trailer um, and will prevent your fenders from getting fully ripped off. Um, we do offer little drop steps that index into these slots and then allow you a, a, a little bit lower uh, ingress step. We like to include uh, little Jeep style nylon handles which make these tile doors much easier to close from inside. Um, very simple deadbolt for inside locking. And then very nice stainless hardware. Very traditional, this is what they used back in the 30s and 40s for teardrops and it still works. We do offer uh, options for AC if you need it, if you're in a place that that's required. We think for most people in most places at most times, it's not necessary. We also offer heating in a variety of ways, but again, I'll usually talk people out of it unless it's required for their specific needs. And there are many ways to accomplish that. My favorite of which is also the simplest and the cheapest, which is an electric blanket. But we also offer things like forced air propane furnaces for the people that need that kind of integration. You can get a little hint of our uh, frame reinforcement that we always do for our alpha and off-road trailers. Um, we have a, a traditional A-style um, boxed-in tube steel frame, but then we add extra strength gussets where it's appropriate. And you'll notice the very thickest point is right where the tongue of the trailer exits the body of the trailer, where the highest stresses are on that part of the system. And so we're trying to be as efficient as we can with the material and the weight and the product so that it, it does what it needs to do and it stays as light as possible. We always use our max coupler for our off-road trailers. Um, I should say Kilby Off-Roads max coupler. Um, very simple product. There's a yoke uh, that um, cradles this from the back of the tow vehicle and it couples with just a simple pin. Rotates on this axis, on this axis, and then the yoke also rotates. So you have full articulation. It will not come off. We always use a receiver in the front of our trailers so that you can use something like this or something else. If you have a different preference, if you prefer lock and rolls or, some other, or a pintle hook or a regular ball coupler. We always use a wheeled tongue jack with an eight inch wheel on the front. Between this and our stabilizing leveling jacks in the back, you get tripodal full leveling potential. You can see we have tents on top of our trailers because we have kids. And so one of the good reasons to drop the stabilizing jacks is just to help isolate that movement and keep the suspension from reacting anytime people move around. We like, a 55 inch traditional awning on this style trailer. Uh, they fit the shape and the size very well. You get about seven feet of extension. You can get these with uh, zip in rooms to create an enclosed space outside of your trailer. Uh, there's many ways of achieving that. I personally prefer a uh, light speed style uh, potty tent. Those are great, it goes up quick and it allows you to stand up and you can change and you keep a little potty in there if you're off grid. Um, Shower also works great for that. So it's a, a nice way, a nice complement to these kinds of trailers. Um, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll have this deployed and then mat mating up to it, 
a regular 10 by 10 canopy, which is gold for teardrop people, I'm sure you know. It's 100 square feet of, of really nice coverage from both any kind of elements, rain, sun, doesn't matter. Um, we like to put side-mounted propane tanks. It doesn't stick out farther from the body than the fenders. It, it is inside of that surface. So this is actually the shore inlet. This comes standard. Um, so anytime you're at a campsite or at your home in your garage, you plug in here and the trailer is powered. We then, on this particular trailer, have opted for both types of power outlet. So if you have uh, a fridge, for instance, that you want to sit here and power, that's a great spot for it. These are 20 amp capable. And then we have a 120 volt outlet. This trailer is equipped with a 2000 watt inverter. So it's um, a nice way to get power outside of the trailer without having a cord strung from inside or out of the galley. This trailer is also fitted with area lights, so we can come and switch. Oops. So we have these lights that uh, flank the galley, and that way, if you're in here, it's dark, and you have all your light on here, it can make outside of your little light envelope seem very dark. And so this is a way to kind of give you the comfort of your peripheral vision back. I've never seen anybody do that. Yeah, well, it it's a, uh, came out of necessity, basically, just noticing that, boy, this feels great, but this feels like a black wall of nothing. And so it's nice to have the ability to light that space as well. We also offer porch lights, of course. We do them differently than most. On most trailers, your porch lights would be a little wall mount unit here facing down. I don't like those personally. I think it blinds you instantly. Usually the wrong color temperature, they're like the white blue, which is awful. What we do instead is we put our lights under the door and that lights the ground and not your face. It gives you light where you need it, but not where you don't want it. We use a very warm color temperature for our exterior lighting so that it's not annoying for your neighbors and also doesn't wreck your night vision instantly when you get up to go to the bathroom or, or whatever the case may be. Lighting is really one of the things that I think separates us from many of the other uh, entries in the market and that we spend a lot of attention on it. Um, the way that you experience these things, a lot of it has to do with what it looks like. And what it looks like is how it's lit, just like with photography. The, you can have the best camera in the world, but if your lighting is poor, a lot of times it doesn't look good. Same thing in real life. You want the right kind of light to experience the thing well. So, we use indirect lighting as often as we can. It's all dimmable, it's all warm color temperature, uh, wide beam angle. When you're, this is not in bed mode at the moment, but when this is the mat, full mattress layout and your head is here, the light is shining away from you and not at all in your face. And it's extremely useful kind of light because it's the same color temperature as the wood and it just refracts and reflects and fills the cabin really well. You struggle to even form a shadow. So this is what the inside of our trailers lay out like. Cabinetry above your legs, your feet shoot underneath what we call the footwell here. Uh, we always have 12 inches of space between the top of the mattress and the bottom of the footwell, which for most people is plenty. Um, we have a six foot six long bed in all of our trailers. Every trailer always has six foot six in length. The width varies depending on model. This is a five foot wide trailer. So after you take away the thickness of the material, we're left with 58 and a half inches of interior width, which is pretty common in this kind of um, sized trailer. It's plenty, it's effectively a queen size bed. I sleep very well in it with my wife. On this trailer, we've put in some little nice storage shelves, things that you can use uh, at camp just to place your dinner or your coffee or um, Sawyer's wife will do her makeup here using the mirror and have, you know, it's just work surfaces are, are critical. But they fold away when you don't need them. And then we outfit them with little nets underneath. So if you want to store your book or your hat or um, inside of the cabinetry, lots of good space, adjustable shelves. Uh, we always put a mirror up in here, which helps a couple things, makes the cabin look a little bigger and also uh, pre prepare yourself in the morning. And you'll notice a perimeter of screws around these plates, making them removable for servicing. Um, all of our electrical plates are like that as well. So you can take the whole entire plate out as a module um, or replace you know, parts as necessary. And everything's on a switch. So if you need to, you know, if you want USB power or not, you can kill the power to that device. So it's not just a drain on your battery. We use these touch capacitive dimmers. So you just 
press and hold it until the light is at the level that's appropriate for the time. This is a bit bright for uh, an actual nighttime. So you just press and hold and it will dim all the way down to there and press again and it'll start dimming up. The side table that we showed earlier mounts right up in here when it's not being deployed. There's a little bracket there and there and they insert into that bracket and this one and then it'll catch holds it and now it's fully uh, away. It's still plenty of foot room for uh, most people to leave it in place if you don't want it deployed. We like to put these, what we call a door skirt in. This keeps your bedding from getting squirted out of the door as you close it basically and interrupting your seal, causing a leak. Uh, in the front, you'll notice the access doors to that outside space that we looked at. Again, we call it a tongue box, really. It's a forward closet. And one of the things that we also offer is what we call a panic siren. So. This is uh, a way to scare off critters that are uh, <laughs> encroaching in your space. Uh, Four-legged, two-legged, whoever. Um, in the front here, we like to put a, um, this is actually our reading light. It is, at its heart, just a USB set of outputs. And then we have map lights that are gooseneck that come out of those. And they're great, they're warm white, they're LED. We always like to use our fantastic fan, by, now by Dometic. Three speed, um, reversible has a little thermostat control. They move plenty of air. They're pretty quiet, very, um, very efficient. And so the, the roof is very well insulated all the way from basically the bed to the galley. The walls are uninsulated except by the material. And then the coating on the outside actually adds to it. Um, it's not rated for that purpose, but in effect, it, it works rather well. So it goes a long way as to actually helping to insulate and, and, and keep the space both quiet and weatherproof, obviously, but also um, resilient to temperature change. Currently, Oregon Trailer has switched over to a new galley design. As seen here, the cabinets are now CNC'd using that beautiful Baltic birch you see throughout the trailer. John says, besides having less waste and a quicker manufacturing process versus the traditional style cabinets you saw earlier, he says this new style also increases the overall strength of the trailer. Now for what I like about this trailer, the small details. I've never seen a manufacturer dial in the small details like Oregon Trailer. Like you heard during this walkthrough, they've been doing this for a long time and now they're in the refinement stage. I can't specifically remember when John and Sawyer started Oregon Trailer, but I know they've been running this business for over 10 years now. These two brothers are doing something right when you realize how rare it is for a small camper company to survive past the 10 year mark. The next one is quality of components and build materials in relation to the price. John and Sawyer consider themselves to be targeting the high-end market, meaning they didn't set out to create a budget or even mid-range teardrop trailer. If you're looking for a high-end teardrop at a mid-range teardrop price, this is where it's at. The final like before getting to dislikes is the material they use to seal up this trailer. Basically, they're using a Raptor liner. When I visited the shop, Oregon Trailer said this coating essentially turns the trailer into a one-piece shell, eliminating water intrusion, boosting insulation, and obviously adding additional protection from scrapes and bumps. While I like the use of a protective liner, this liner also leads me to my dislikes. While I'm not saying John is wrong here, I tend to often look at trailers for the first time with critical eyes. I've talked to many trailer manufacturers over the years and learned that trailer liners like Rhino Liner, Raptor, Armadillo, they all have their weaknesses. And two of these weaknesses are around cracking, either due to vibrations or from expanding and contracting due to weather conditions. These factors can lead to problems over time anywhere two surfaces join together, allowing for some movement. For example, walls, subfloors, roofs, like traditional manufactured teardrop trailers that need some shoring up after about five years on the road, it's difficult for me to imagine that this trailer's liner won't crack in high stress areas within four to five years as well. However, this doesn't take away from this trailer. It still adds additional protection that 99% of trailers on the road just don't have. I'm just alluding to the fact that underneath this liner, you still have traditional teardrop construction that can shift over time. If you know me, you know that I have to mention that three-quarter galley on this trailer. If you wonder why I dislike it, just check out my high camp teardrop trailer walkthrough. I go into great detail within that video on the limitations of a three-quarter galley hatch. I will link that video for you in the description below.
I had a hard time finding things I disliked about this trailer. So instead of nitpicking, I'll use my third dislike as an opportunity to educate. Adding heavy overland components like Oregon Trailer did here has little impact on gas mileage. You may be surprised how well a 1500 pound trailer performs versus a 900 pound trailer when they both have similar aerodynamic properties and size. But adding frontal area in the form of a wall, such as a rooftop tent, awnings, boxes, this is where you will see a dramatic decrease in your overall gas mileage. Throwing this stuff on is bad enough at 55 miles per hour, but wait until you start driving above 60. Each additional mile per hour you add has a significant decrease on gas mileage. Just to give you an example, when I was zipping on the interstate with the rooftop tent installed last summer, I was seeing gas mileage between 9 to 11 miles per gallon with the Subaru Outback and this was on flat land. If you're looking for the best bang for your buck, I think it can be found in Oregon right now. If you haven't seen our walkthrough of Aero Teardrops, check out this video on the left. This is another great mid-price trailer coming out of Oregon, but with high price features. And if you're on a budget or need additional space, check out our six by 12 teardrop walkthrough on the right here from Ben Teardrops in Oregon. And if you're new here, don't forget to check out all of our playlists or trailer walkthroughs. As usual, stay safe out there and we will see you in the next episode.